Greetings, friends. Have you ever thought of a necromancer? It actually uses his harvest himself while shredding everything. It's not just doing all the having all the minions do the work, but also doing something ourselves, right? A little bit. Welcome, it's Alexo with a new build. I've been working on this a little bit. Um, it's very similar to the the budget lord I was posting, the budget rev lord. Except with a more melee focused version. More abilities. The main idea is we have Bud and Bob, right? This is Bud, this is Bob, these two. And Bud is our tank, right? And he's the threat, so enemies attack him first, so he's tanking for us. And Bob over here, he's our main DPS, together with me, of course, with my Harvest. Although he does way more damage than I do. I will, I will give him that. Um, the Harvest we mostly have to give our minions some buffs. As well, that's the main idea of it. Because we gain Spirit Shards down here, and once we have 13 and do another hit, the minions get damage buff for 4 seconds. So he's doing his 8 to 15k crit, sometimes even 20k, depends a little. It's basically a red shade build. But that's pretty much what this whole thing comes down to. So what does this build do? How does it work? It's actually very similar. As I said, it's pretty similar to the original um, Wrath Lord. Just a few things. So let's look at our skills. Dread Shade again is pretty much exactly the same as it was. We want to go with the Egoism down here. I gotta remove myself the Egoism. Your minion always crits if it has Dread Shade on it. Simple, always critical strikes. Then this one, this here. It doesn't drain health anymore, so it doesn't die from the Dread Shade. And everything else is pretty much the same. One key thing is different. This one, we now also get the buff from the Dread Shade Aura because we're also hitting, right? That's that's pretty nice. We gain more, more crit damage. And Mark for Death, just for, for a nice addition. That's really it about the Dread Shade. Pretty much the same thing. Now, Harvest. How is this interesting for a bunch of things? First of all, obviously we have Necrotic Penetration. That's nice. The main thing I want is, is this. Instantly kill enemies that are below a health threshold. So that's great for bosses. And this is Spirit Shards. Right? When you hit with Harvest, you stack up Spirit Shards. If you have 13, you consume them. And you gain 65% more damage. And your minions as well. Alright, you also gain mana, but that's irrelevant. But the minions gain 65% more damage. So this then is when they really wrap up their, their crit damage a lot. Especially our Bob, right? The Arc Mage. We also have this. Harvest grants you what when it hits a cursed enemy. And it also grant the, the ward tree from, like the ward buffs from this tree also grant to your minions, making them tank you. Now it says cursed, all right? So you have to hit a cursed enemy with it. And we do this with our transplant. Because down here, we cast bone curse. And the way you play this, and I'm gonna show you later how to play this exactly, is you, you jump in with your transplant, then you just start hitting harvest, that's all you do, while your Bob has his dread shade on him. It's a very fun build actually, I like it a lot. Because not just standing around where the minions do everything, you actually do shit yourself. So very nice. Everything else, transplant is exactly the same as always. Uh, exploding at the target addition. Um, no, this additional body when you arrive, it also explodes. This one is to key the bone armor because now we also tank here while we stand in the enemies. Very important. This just buffs the bone armor some more. And we want to turn it into necrotic damage because we mostly do necrotic damage due to our items which we go over later. The Bone Golem is pretty simple. We want to have this one. If you skip other nodes as you want, that's fine. But you got to have this one because it makes him bigger and it generates more threat because he is the tank. We want anyone, everyone to attack him, right? He is sort of the deflective flash shield for us, right? That's the key idea with him. We turn him into cold, a death chill golem. Down here, this, this node, right? The death chill golem basically just converts all his damage into cold. Um, it's not necessary, but he gains buffs from our from our weapon, so why not, right? Why not use it? If you don't want to go with this, which is totally fine, you can just keep him as a physical flash tank. Then you can increase armor, you can increase movement speed, for example, or give him more health and armor here. 
I might even respect this one and go with that. Um, not sure. But that, that's something you can play around with. You want to have him tanky as much as possible. He's the tank, all right? If you gain more, like, plus bone golem items, then you can just throw it all in there. Then we have our Skelly Mage. And the, the key thing you want to go for first, of course, is the Arc Mage over here. You have only one Skeleton Mage. You want to have one because if you have multiple, it's virtually impossible to hit the Dread Shade properly. So you want to be, you want to have Bob, right? That's Bob. Okay, cool. And more projectiles, you want to max this one out so they shoot in a wider cone so that hits more enemies. That's great. Attack speed, cast speed, awesome. Then you want to go down here and this one is the key one. This one isn't really necessary. You, I'm thinking of even removing them, but I kind of like the um, movement speed of it because he's such a slow ass. Um, but I might put this into a health leech, for example, or even additional spell damage. We'll see. This one you gotta have, okay? Because that's a crit multi. The crit chance is irrelevant because we have our dread shades, so he always crits, right? The, the, the crit chance doesn't matter. You wanna go with the Grey Merchant. And then you can play around. You can go with more attack and cast speed. You can go with more spell damage. You can go with more health leech or more health on him. You can choose this yourself. But uh, this one is a necessity as well as this and this. This brings us to the base idea of how you play this. It's very simple, as I said. The best thing you do usually the first time you go into an echo is um, you gotta wait until your death trick golem starts attacking because he's in the enemies and the... Bob the Archmage will stand behind them, then it's easier for you to actually cast a dredged on him. That's what you do. You cast a dredged on him. It works the same because I had him over here. It also says it down here. Sadly, it doesn't say which one has it. So it, you see the this thing. It's very, very shallow. This thing above his head here. Once you have the dredged on it, you just jump in and you start hitting. Because you saw when I use my transplant, it casts the bone curse around. Did you see that? That cause the curse thingy, all right? And also, you see it down here, gains me frenzy. So I have fast attack speed. So the first few seconds hit really hard. I think it's three seconds or something. So that's great. That's very awesome with the transplant. And that's all you do. You have him buffed. With, see, he lost the dread shade now. You give him dread shade, you jump in, you keep hitting. Four seconds, actually exactly as long as your bone armor lasts. It's a cooldown. A bit, it's actually a little bit longer. And you transplant in again. With bosses, you just keep doing that because it also does a good amount of damage. And you just keep hitting because the, the longer you hit, the more you build up these stacks. And anytime you consume them, your minions do more damage. Every now and then, of course, you have to reapply the dread shade to your, to your mage. But um, you get the hang of it. It's 18 seconds, I believe, it lasts. Um, so you, you'll get the hang of it very fast. For the passives, this one is a little bit of a different one because we put a lot in the Lich, actually. Okay, I gotta show this here because I didn't actually respect my, my character yet. Doesn't matter. Um, with the Acolyte, you want to go with this, right? Vitality and Minion Health. Minion Cast Speed, Attack Speed, Intelligence, Necro Resistance, and he over here. Increase Necrotic Damage for you, so you shred more. Damn Chance, pretty nice. And Minion Necrotic Damage, 72%. So you are... While your Bone Golem does... Cold damage, but we don't really care about his damage. We want to have him as a tank or bot. Bob, on the other hand, he does necrotic damage. It's not a cold mancer. He's doing necrotic damage. Okay. Very key thing. And with the necromancer, it's very simple. Pretty much the same things as always. You have your minion health. You have your minion damage attack and cast speed. You have your necrotic damage, physical damage, wall retention. That's good for you. Armor shred. More cast speed on the minions and attack speed. This is just more health for you because, especially in Hall Corruption, you die fast. So you need this, even with the low life build. Necrotic damage, but you really only have to get this for this. 150% more necrotic damage and elemental damage. Elemental damage is just for the bone golem, but whatever. And this, of course, crit multi. That is the key thing. You want to have this max as fast as possible. 70% more crit multi. Insane. Also, chill chance is nice and cool damage. Very, very nice. It applies very nicely with our build. We don't do anything else because most of it is in the Lich because we want to do some damage as well. And we're going to get... Like, intelligence scales our damage insanely, right? For all our minions as well as us. Increased damage. Tripled at low life. That is key because we're always at low life, right? Because we're running Exanctionist. 
Necroid damage, 60% more. Nice. But this, you can even remove a little bit of damage about out of this and put more into the crippling inside because that is two points of intelligence per point of this node meaning you can get this up to 16 intelligence extra which is a lot of damage because see scaling tag intelligence so he does more damage the more int you have intelligence 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 okay you got to be clever then do more damage very simple now to the items. Exanctionist is an obvious one. If you have the with LP on it, like I do here, then you throw health on it. Um, that's pretty much the only thing you really need on it. Health, health, health. So you are tankier. Because right now we're only sitting at 3,500 ward. That is not that crazy, but good enough. Last House of the Living, same thing. Um, you gain your you gain more ward, water decay threshold, etc. But also a key thing, 300% freeze rate. That's pretty nice. So you're freezing the enemies more likely with your harvest. Now the key thing in this whole thing obviously is this. The eulogy of blood. Now you really, you do really kind of need this, the exemption is any last house of the living. Because otherwise, I have tried this as a high life build, right? Um, not a low life build like this one. I have tried it. You die way too fast because the, the health is not that good. You're sitting at like 2k health-ish with a little bit of ward on top and you just die too fast, like one shot by some things. I still get one shot sometimes with this at 3.5k. So if you have more health on your Exanctionist and you can get this up to like 5k or something, that's even better. What you can also do is instead of this, this helmet over here, you can also run the Bone Claymore Barboot. I have this here. This one, because it gives you ward per one, ward per second per three percent uncapped necrotic resistance. So you can stack a necrotic resistances on top of your exalts to gain even more ward from that. And but kind of like the uh, increased health as well. So it's kind of a you can try what works for you. If you have it, um, I would probably go with it. If you don't, you can go with the regular just health, intelligence, mana, necro resistance, whatever. It's just this is a very simple one, very obvious one. Anyway, the main thing is this, right? Eulogy of Blood. Melee necrotic damage. Increased melee necrotic damage in percent. 140% increased minion necrotic damage. And that is your Bob. That's Bob, right? He does necrotic damage with his, with his spells. That's what you want. We also have 37 melee cold damage. That's cool. We don't really care. It's fine. Minion melee cold damage, also irrelevant. Good for the, for the guy. For our, our dude. What's it called? Bud. Chance to bleed on melee hit. That's nice. Bleed duration. Nice. Chance to cast rib blood at five nearby targets on melee hit. I tried this actually with a rib blood build before where I actually maxed out rib blood. I didn't do much. The problem is you don't even want this. It's sort of just an addition you have. We really mostly want to have this for the mini necrotic damage, which is kind of insane at 140%. And of course, our melee necrotic damage. So this buffs our damage as well. I think this is kind of common to find this. But as you can tell, it's level 83. So um, this is not an early build. This comes live way later. But it's pretty poor. And like I'm running at 100 corruption just fine here. Um, with almost no problems. If I actually run this, I probably have a lot more health. Yeah. Not a lot more though, because my necrotic resistance is only 200%. Eh, it's not as good as I thought it would be. It's a little bit more, but we gain more intelligence as well, dexterity. It's probably better to run this than that. I'll test it. Anyway, so this, most of the things down there we don't care. The melee cold damage, I even tried this with melee, um, with the melee mages in cold damage and so this didn't really do much. The best thing I got from it was with the minion necrotic damage on this weapon in the implicit up there. That's the key thing you want from this. This is what you need. Okay? Everything else is simple. Minion damage. Minion damage is also as Necro Res. Gives us even more buff. Elemental damage. That's cool for the bot, I guess. Minion crit multi. Implicit. The, like the turquoise rings you need. These are great because they have insane implicits. Minion damage. Minion health. Shred armor on hit. Elemental resistance. Cool. 
Plus two to harvest. If you don't necessarily need this, I think you're good enough, but it's cool. Minion damage and critical resistance, again, same thing. And of course, this, if you have it, most people should have that. This is, of course, insane. Minion crit multi, intelligence. This really ramps up your damage again. And this one is just a cool addition. You don't need to have it. Uh, minion melee damage leech itself is only cool for your bot. Minion increased leech rate is cool for the bob. Physical damage for minions, it's okay. I might even throw this out for a Turkus ring that has more crit multi on it. But it's a ni nice addition. So he also leeches health so he doesn't die. Because his, his health is not that crazy. And on here, I went with necrotic damage. So I do more damage. I wanted to find the sort of a balance between me doing damage together with Bob and our, our friend, the Bud. Uh, you can also go fully into minion damage. You can do this with all your items. And so your harvest doesn't really do much. I mean, this only does 1300 damage. It's not crazy. But it's the buffs it gives the minions. So you can play around with this. I was going for this. Maybe the other thing is better. If you find a better build, post it below for sure. I want to see it. Um, that's really it about the items. Very simple. There's not really many um, substitutions. You, you need this. The build only really works with this because of the minion necrotic damage. You kind of need the ward. You can try a full life build if you want. I've tried it. Didn't work. You can also go... Um, instead of the transplant, you can try to do the rip blood if you go the full life build. And just put transplant in here without ever um like without a specialization you can try that because rip blood is cast by your item right there's a 33 percent chance even if i turn it into ward because you can do this right you can turn it into ward over here so it gives you one instead of health still didn't feel good just didn't feel good i don't know you can play around with it maybe you'll find a better one that does more damage I'm running this at 100 corruption. I don't think it can go really high. I think it will struggle probably near the 200s. Um, unless you find better items. Or especially if you put more... Like if you put health on this and you're sitting at like 5 to 6k health. Then I can see how you can go higher than two, uh, 200 corruption. Other than that, it's not a build designed for that. This is a build that is fun. And with 100 corruption you can already farm pretty nicely in my eyes. Alright, for the idols... Very simple, same thing as always. Health, 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 or crit even. Minion crit. Uh, the chances are relevant, we can actually change this, but I like the health on it. Uh, cooldown recovery speed, that's nice, so you can uh, shoot faster. Health, 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 health. With Necromancer, we really only always use the same things. Especially in a low-life build, it's always health. Not even in the low-life build, it's just, it's always health. You want to have more health. Because you're squishy, and you, you gotta be tankier. That's pretty much the same thing always, so that's the always the easiest one to do. I mean, that's it. As I said, you run in, wait for your Bone Golem to attack, then you give Dread Shad on this guy, and you run in and start hitting. That's what you do. You can even kick this Mage quite nicely. As you see, the damage from our Mage is pretty insane. I just give the buffs. That's what I do. So I'm just more of a support for our Bob. Mostly. And that's what you do. Make sure he always has the dread shit on him. You jump in, you keep casting your harvest. Sometimes it's close, like in this case I really gotta look into more health. So um, yeah, the more health you can have on your items, the better this build becomes. And where's my Bob here? Cast dread shit on him again, so he crits consistently. There we are. As I said, this is 100 Corruption. And it's mostly a breeze, I would say. Of course, it's not as insane as other builds. If he's single out like this, you can always just cast your Dreadshade when it's off cooldown. Like now. To make things easier. Again, it's not like the Warlock who shreds everything easily, just like that. Um, but it still is enough, I feel like. It is... It's cool. I like it from the playstyle. I will also try a Lich that just runs a Necromancer sort of cold army with him, but I have to level my Lich first before we get there. This is on the Necromancer. Um, for now, as I said, maybe you'll find a better version. 
or something that is, has more survivability. Maybe you find a better item even. Play around with it. I am enjoying this a lot. Because I'm not just standing around, I'm actually doing something with the Necromancer by attacking and even supporting my minions by doing so. So this is why I like this build up. Come on, attack. Sometimes he's a bit slow, but there we are. That was easy, wasn't it? Almost died. Sometimes you gotta be fast, especially if you don't cast your transplant all the time, you really lack the bone armor, which is very powerful. So yeah, let me know in the comments and below what you think of this build, if you have any ideas to make it better, and or what's missing, what you think could be changed, even in the skills, whatever. I'm enjoying this a more active necromancer that just focuses on Bud and Bob. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.